Hey guys, welcome to my kitchen. Today I am going to cook a um, an American dish. I've, I've been set a bit of a challenge. I am going to cook a dish called um, chili. Now, I've got a friend over in the States that loves going to Wendy's and getting the chili from Wendy's, but she just can't tolerate the beans in it. So I told her that I would look for a, um, a Google a few recipes and do a bit of mixing and matching and put something together. Now, the funny thing about this is, I actually don't know what the Wendy's chili tastes like, so you guys are gonna have to help me out in the comments below and let me know if it's anything like the Wendy's chili that you can buy over in the States. So, um, welcome to the kitchen, let's get cooking. All right, let's get cooking. First, we're gonna heat up our pan and add our olive oil. While we're waiting for that to just heat up and before I put the mince in, um, I'm just gonna, I've, I got a couple of recipes and I switched them around a bit because there was one that said you needed a, um, a chili seasoning mix. Starters, I can't get the chili seasoning mix here and the one over in the US has gluten in it and my friend can't do gluten either. So I found a couple of other chili recipes and they had individual spices and I also looked at the packet mix and I, um, I used, um, used the spices off the packet mix and off um, other people's websites. So I've kind of combined a few different recipes in as one. So fingers crossed this all turns out and tastes good. Um, so I made my own spice mix, which is this one. It's not gonna go until later. We're gonna put the ground meat in and we're gonna cook that. Now make sure you use a pot that's gonna be big enough to add all of these ingredients into. You don't want it overflowing or anything like that. If you don't like using olive oil, you could use any other oil. Um, I, I mix between olive oil and coconut oil. They're the two oils I use. Okay, now that the meat's, you know, around about half of it's cooked, I'm just gonna make a little, a little hollow in the middle and allow some of the fat to, the oil and stuff to come into the middle. And I'm gonna add my tomato paste. and my onions. Give that a bit of a stir in the centre. Just allow those onions to start getting soft and fragrant. Now while we're just waiting for that to um, cook a little bit more, instead of doing beans, I'm doing this um, mixed vegetables, which is just from the fro um, frozen section. Real cheap, only $1.60 in place of the beans. So you could go for whatever mixed vegetables, but this is cauliflower, broccoli, carrots and peas. And that's what I'm gonna use, but I'm not gonna put this in until right near the end, so it just has long enough to, to heat through and um, add some bulkiness to the meal. Okay, that's come together quite nicely. I'm gonna add the celery, the capsicum or green peppers. I'm 
just going to mix that through. I'm also going to add my spice mixture. I'm just going to shake that over the top. Stir that all around. I'm going to add my tin tomatoes, which once again is just the cheap brand. Let's not make anything more expensive than what it needs to be. Two large tins of that. Now, as you can already see, this is going to make a huge amount. It's definitely going to feed my family of five with leftovers. Just mix that all through. And then I'm going to turn down the heat on this and um, get it just simmering ever so gently for an hour or so. And then I will add the mixed veg mixed frozen veggies and let them warm up in the mixture and then it'll be ready to eat. So we'll just let it simmer now with the lid on. Okay, it's been simmering for a couple of hours. It smells delicious. Looks delicious. Now I'm gonna add I'm going to add my frozen veggies and mix them in. Now the original recipe said to add a cup of water, but that was with beans. And since I'm using frozen veg, I think it'll get enough moisture out of the frozen vegetables to soup it up a little bit. So we'll see. I'm going to let that continue to simmer for about... Um, maybe an hour, hour to hour and a half, and we'll see how it goes. Okay, so the veggies have been in for nearly an hour and a half now, so that's a total cook time of close to four hours. But obviously you can um, not cook it for as long. I like to stew something like this down quite a bit. Now, I'm not too sure whether it's meant to be like soupier or not, but this has done quite a huge amount and I'm really looking forward to tasting it. Here we go, I've just topped it with a bit of coconut sour cream and some spring onions.